In this video, I'm gonna talk about what's inside my camera bag for wedding photography. What's up guys, Reggie B Photo here and welcome back to the channel. So for those of you who are new, my name is Reggie Ballesteros and I'm a wedding photographer based in the San Francisco Bay Area. In today's video, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna talk about all my gear, my lenses, my flash system, everything that I bring to a wedding day as a Fujifilm wedding photographer. So let's jump right into the first piece of gear and that is this dual camera holster. So I use the Holdfast Moneymaker in order to carry two camera bodies because I shoot with only prime lenses. The Moneymaker basically lets you shoot with two different cameras at the same time. And if you ever get to a point where you need to release the camera and shoot high or low, it's pretty simple. You just kind of release this right here. Then you can do your high angle and your low angle shots. And it's a little bit of a skilled task to put it back on without looking, but I've been practiced enough to be able to do that safely. It's pretty quick and easy. You just pull one camera up, shoot, and if at the other one, if you need the other one, just pull that up as well. Obviously, this is not a Fujifilm X-T3 because that is filming the video right there. So speaking of the X-T3, I shoot with two Fujifilm X-T3s on the wedding day. Um, I basically use X-T3s because of the faster autofocus. Basically has the fastest autofocus out of all the Fujifilm cameras at this point. I also like it for the EVF because it lets me preview my exposure in real time. A couple other features that I use the X-T3 over the other Fujifilm cameras is because of the dual card slots, 100% phase detect autofocus coverage over the whole sensor. It's got better continuous autofocus and single point autofocus in lower light than all the previous other Fujifilm cameras before it. And in my experience using it for a full season at this point, it's a very fast and robust camera for a Fujifilm camera. As far as memory cards go, I use four of these as my primary memory cards on the wedding day. It's the 128 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme Pro cards. It's the 95 megabyte per second read and write cards. Um, basically, V30. If you check out my other video over here, um, 95 megabyte per second is more than enough for my type of shooting. I really have to do that many like long bursts during a wedding day. So um, the reason why I use four of these cards is I have one in the main slot and the other one in the second slot doing backups of the RAWs. So I basically shoot RAW to both slots and these 128 gigabytes will last pretty much the entire wedding day. I've shot a 12 hour wedding day at this point and not have to change cards. So now let's talk about lenses. I start every single wedding day with the same combo and that's the Fujifilm 23 millimeter 1.4 on one body and the 56 millimeter 1.2 on the other body. So first up, let's talk about the 23 millimeter 1.4. This is really my main workhorse lens when paired with the 56 millimeter 1.2 and I use it for pretty much everything from environmental portraits. Um, you can really get close for in that intimate feeling uh, because it's a, a normal wide angle lens. Um, I do some light detail work with it. And in a pinch, it's also great for uh, formal portraits, specifically like the group portraits, like the family formal. It should be noted that if I was asked to shoot a wedding with just one lens, it would be this. It would be the 23 millimeter 1.4, um, just because I tend to have portraiture that's on the wider and um, I like to do environmental portraiture. And as far as documentary works, you can always come in and get closer and more intimate for those shots. You can't always scoot further back. So if that speaks anything to how much I like this lens and how much I use it, I hope that makes that message clear for you guys. So my next workhorse lens is the 56 millimeter 1.2. This is pretty much my main bokeh lens. You know, I use it a lot for portraiture, of course. And also I actually use it for detail shots. And as far as documentary work, it's really great for candids, just getting those moments. And also for formal portraits that I want to do very close up, this is my main lens usually to do it. And something a little different is it's my main ring shot lens as I use it with the 16 millimeter Fujifilm extension tube. So 
So stepping back a little bit, I wanna talk about my first bag that I carry with me and it's the Ona Brixton. Pretty much this is my main like lens carrier bag. Inside it, I carry, um, in addition to the stuff that I already mentioned, um, I carry all my batteries from my Fujifilm cameras. So. So I carry 10 batteries total in addition to the one in each of the cameras that I carry with me. Um, I have eight additional Fujifilm batteries. Typically I use around, I want to say five to six batteries over the course of an entire wedding day, but I bring extras just because things might happen and it's not cool to run out of battery during the wedding day or to have to like run over to an outlet to get your charger out and charge that up. Um, so I bring more than I need. And I also just use for my own peace of mind, uh, Fujifilm branded batteries. Um, I just don't really wanna take a chance with a third party battery for my paid professional client work. So another lens that I carry in my bag is the 35 millimeter 1.4. And paired with my 16 millimeter 1.4, this is my kind of close quarters documentary wedding lens combination. So any type of small hotel room or some place that I'm really up against a wall and I can't really scoop back and I just need to do my documentary coverage and portraiture, the 35, 16 millimeter 1.4 combo on the Fujifilm is really awesome. You're basically getting the 24 and 50 millimeter equivalent on full frame. Because the 35 millimeter 1.4 can focus very close, it's one of my go-to lenses for detail shots on the bride and the groom, as well as just any detail shots that I have to get very quickly. It's also my, my go-to kind of like bokeh portrait lens when I don't have too much space. For group shots though, if I have enough space to back up, I use the 35 millimeter 1.4 as my main go-to for formal portraits like family and stuff. To be honest, out of all the four main lenses that I carry, this is probably the one that I use the least out of those, but still the 16, the 23, the 35, and the 56 are my main wedding photography kit. So next is my go-to lens for very wide angle perspective, and that's the 16 millimeter 1.4. Um, and that's filming right now, so let's see. So yeah, the 16 millimeter 1.4. Like I said before, this is my main go-to lens for that wide angle perspective. And paired with the 35 millimeter 1.4, it's my go-to for tight, close quarters documentary work. This lens is extremely versatile and you know, low light. It focuses very, very close. Um, for those ceremony shots where I need a wide shot or a room wide shot for a reception, I use this a lot for architecture. And you know, when you take portraits with it, if you can nail it, it's a really, really epic and awesome portrait when you do environmental portraits with it. For the reception and the dancing, especially during like the party time when I'm dragging the shutter, this is my main go-to lens for that. Um, and I've actually taken the occasional ring shot with it just because you can focus that close with it. For extremely large group formals, it's not ideal, but this is what I use if I can't like back up enough. All right, now I gotta switch that lens back. So the next lens that I have in my, uh, in my camera bag is the 90 millimeter F2. So this lens is extremely sharp. It has a lot of reach and it has a lot of great compression. For anything that I want a razor razor sharp image for either detail shots or portraits, or maybe for something that the 56 millimeter 1.2 just can't focus close enough, but I need that compression, the 90 millimeter F2 is where it's at. Um, this is the one that I also use for ring shots sometimes if the 56 millimeter 1.2 comboed with the 16 millimeter extension tube is focusing too close. If I need to scoot back just a little bit more, I'm gonna use a 90 millimeter, take kind of like that pull back ring shot. Again, this is my main lens for long reach um, for any type of documentary work or candidates. Um, I'm using this uh, during churches that I can't get too close to the ceremony. And also I've noticed that if I need a really fast telephoto lens where the 56 millimeter 1.2 just doesn't cut it, um, I'm using the 90 millimeter F2. This lens is super nice. I wish it was larger aperture, but for the most part, it's really great as a long reach lens for my Fujifilm system if I'm just using only primes. Can't quite afford that 200 F2 quite yet. So a couple other things that I carry inside this bag specific before we move on to the big flash bag. 
um, is I have this Manfredo nano clamp. So what I basically use this for is anytime I need a utility just like clamp for anything. What it helps for is if you need to hang up a dress in a hotel room or a room that just doesn't have a good spot to hang that hanger on. Um, I've also used it to kind of like cinch down a dress that just needed to be formed a little bit better to show the overall silhouette better. This is a very good just kind of like utility tool to have in your camera bag. A couple of other things that I have in here is obviously gaffer's tape. Can't really go anywhere without gaffer's tape. It's nice to tape things down or kind of block things out with your flashes and whatnot. I also carry around business cards and looks like this one got folded, but I carry on business cards just because you never know when you're gonna need it. That's just kind of like a given. And then I also have my SD card case right here. Um, it's not all the way full right now, but I basically bring 12 other 64 gigabyte SD cards as just contingency. Like I said before, the 128 gigabytes will do it for me all day. Uh, that doesn't sound right. Um, so the 128 gigabyte cards will pretty much be sufficient for shooting the entire day, but I bring these cards just in case um, something goes wrong. I also use these cards if I have a second shooter with me. I have them shoot to their second card slot uh, with one of my cards. That way, at the end of the day, I can just take their cards without the mail it or anything and just go home and import them. So another thing that I bring around that a lot of you guys will always wonder how I get these type of shots um, is a I bring a little pocket like compact mirror. Um, it's basically intended for, I think for like, for people who want to do their makeup on the fly. I use this to create reflections in my shots and I use them usually for type of like environmental portraiture or even just during like a church ceremony. Some people say to use your iPhone or your cell phone to create those reflections, but I've noticed that it just doesn't do it as good as just a traditional mirror. Another thing that I also bring with me is a prism. Um, this technique was popularized by Sam Hurd, um, just using a prism to kind of do the same thing to have the reflection, but also um, it diffracts a little bit to kind of like spread out those colors so you'll get a little bit of a rainbow effect. Um, ever since I started using the mirror, I have not been using this as much, but I still keep it in my camera bag just in case. A lens pen. You just, you just never know where you're gonna wipe something down on your lens or clean something off, so I just bring it just in case. And then another thing I also bring is um, actually this light right here. So this little, Pocket LED flashlight is the, I think it's called the Aperture AL M9, but basically I just bring this as just a pocket LED, um, either for like detail shots, things, or I even used it as kind of like accent or rim light for some type of portraits before. Yeah, it's a pretty great utility light. It has very good color accuracy and it gets fairly bright too, so. So let's pack this up right here and then we'll move on to the next bag. So next up, is this big bag and it's the Ona Camps Bay backpack. Um, basically, this is my bag that I keep all my flashes in and as well as my any other of my backup lenses, I carry that in here. So let's go through that. So first things first, I wanted to go over uh, my backup lenses. I don't ever really use these on wedding days, but I bring it in the case that something goes wrong, something goes down and I need two extra lenses. And those backup lenses of choice are my 35 millimeter F2 and the 18 millimeter F2. Uh, mine has a Nikon pinch cap on it, but that's an 18 millimeter F2. You know, that's both the 28 and 50 millimeter equivalent focal ranges, which would be very great for documentary work. Um, and they're both F2, so I won't have to be dipping too much. Um, I used to bring the 18 to 55 kit lens as a backup, but I just didn't think I would be able to be comfortable going into those higher ISO ranges, so that's why I bring these two instead. So another lens that I bring for any type of architectural or super wide type of field of views is the Rokinon 12 millimeter F2 lens. Again, that's for anything that I wanna accentuate any type of large architecture or do an extremely wide environmental portrait. This is the lens that I use. So onto my flashes. Um, Something that's very unpopular is I don't use the Godox system of flashes just quite yet. I'm on the fence about it, but in the meantime, I've actually been using the Young Nuo system and it really hasn't been failing me at this point. So what I use is two Young Nuo 660 flashes on top of my cameras. And these are basically bounce flash or direct flash fire. Um, and on my flashes, I do have on uh, two, I'm not sure if you can see that right here. 
I have two um, half CTO gels. So I use a half CTO basically to kind of mimic the same type of tungsten lighting that's in most reception rooms. Um, that way the white balance can all be kind of the same. And in all my flashes, I use four Eneloop Pros. Um, yeah, I know Godox has the nice rechargeable batteries, but at this point I have some very large uh, rechargeable battery chargers that can charge 12 batteries at a time. Basically it looks like this. It's not a problem for me to charge a lot of double A's. So next up are my off-camera flashes. So as my main off-camera flashes, I use two um, Yongnuo 564s. These are nice, they have remote power control. They're pretty much a little brother to the YN660s. Um, and I also have a half CTO gel also taped onto here. And I just use pretty much gaffer's tape on here. I do have a third flash that I use as an auxiliary just in case I need to have one that's accessible on a stand that I can move. Um, it's basically just a third light that I have just in case uh, at the ready. And then to trigger these flashes, I use the Yongnuo YN560 TX. Um, it basically has remote power control. Um, I do something a little weird actually um, that I can explain more in another video. Let me know down in the comments below if you want to see kind of like a how I use flash at a wedding video um, because it's got a lot more to explain but one thing i do is i trigger triggers so basically these are the masters on the camera and they trigger this little trigger and this is kind of like hung on the side right here so i can have power control and basically i can power control the signal from two different cameras with just one trigger if that makes sense so i trigger this trigger and this one triggers this one this one triggers the off-camera flashes. I know it sounds confusing, but it's basically so that I don't have to carry around two of these power control units. It's not really the most cleanest thing to do, but it's been working for me at this point. And this little thing um, is a, a Yongnuo RF605. So as far as everything else, I carry a lot of batteries. All of them are Eneloops. I carry just a bunch. That way I can change the flashes if I need to. The last wedding that I went to, one of the flashes was dead right when I opened it up, even though I charged it. I think I left it on in the bag while I was packing it. Um, so I bring a lot of double A's and then a, I bring like four or five uh, triple A's for my transmitters. So a couple other things. On my flashes that are off camera, I actually put a, I carry these things, they're basically quarter inch honeycomb uh, grids, um, basically to kind of cut down the spill of the light. Basically I just have these on here, put these on here, and I have the grid that go on top of it. And basically that controls any spill um, onto the dance floor, or anything like that, so I can have a more focused beam of light when I'm doing any type of off-camera flash work. So I have two of those to do one each on the off-camera flashes that I have. And I also have two extra ones um, that are actually the 1 8 inch uh, honeycomb grids um, just in case if I needed any type of like more fine work. Um, I'm, I've, I've used these in the past for like portraits that are off camera. And then a couple other things that I have on here are two LED light panels. Uh, these are the Yongnuo YN300 Airs. Um, they have a great CRI. Um, and they're pretty, they're pretty bright, but they're not good. I don't use these for any type of portrait or anything like that. What I use these for is to have a nice large light source for ring shots and any type of product shots that I'm going to do. Also, fun fact, I use these lights for any type of B-roll that I have on my YouTube channel. Um, I carry two of these um, for ring shots. I can show you a quick little like behind the scenes footage of setting up a ring shot as well as kind of the end results right here. So another thing that I bring is I bring a plastic bag in my backpack just in case I get wet or something like that. There's gonna be water, I wanna protect something. I have a plastic bag in here. And something new that I've been doing that I learned from, um, I think his name is Peter Barnes, another YouTuber, um, is to bring one of these Instax printers. Since we're on the Fujifilm system, it might as well take advantage of all the other tools that they provide. And what's cool is you can just print out another picture and give it to a client or another guest or anything like that when they're just kind of on the dance floor. Let's you give the couple something tangible on their wedding day to take home since they have to wait 
a little bit to get the edited photos. Got an extra film pack for the insects film right here. And just to show you how quick and easy it is, I'm just gonna send a photo right here. I've got the thing on. So, while this kind of develops, we're gonna talk about some other things here. And also inside the front here, I have a lot of extra, ooh, I have SD cards in here. I have a lot of extra gels in here. Um, so just right here, I have a lot of extra gels, um, extra business cards in here. But if you wanna take a look at that photo, it's just a couple dancing at the reception. So that's a cool thing you can do. Yeah, so while I have some of the flashes out, I'm gonna go get my light stand bag and kind of show you kind of like a sample setup of what I do and stuff that I bring in my light stand bag. Messy. So next up is my light stand bag, and I have this um, Manfrotto L bag 110. Um, just a basically Manfrotto bag. Uh, the main thing that I have in here are these two light stands. It's packed in here a little bit. So are these two light stands, and these are the Alamaster 104 BAC. They're basically a 12 foot air cushion light stand. The cool thing I like about these two is they kind of like snap together. So these are separate, but when you pack them up for the end of the day, they snap together like that. So you can do like four or five of these, I think. Um, and they fit in one of the bigger bags. On a wedding day, I have these set up, kind of show you guys what I do. I have these set up on the floor. So I have two of those and then I have two of these basically kind of like an umbrella mount. I believe these are Manfrotto, but I'll, I'll put a link in the description to what the umbrella mount. Basically they have this umbrella mount and like what I said, they're air cushion. So basically when you put them up and then you drop them down, they're not just gonna slam down. They kind of like go down slowly, if you know what I mean. I have that like this. And then for the off camera flashes, I have these on the umbrella mount. I also have a cold shoe on here that I put and I've got, I know you guys are gonna be telling me then you need to get on mag mods, but once you have them come out and sponsor me, then I'll, I'll switch to mag mods. For now, I'm just using Velcro. And we got this right here, and this is basically my main off-camera setup. So I've got two of these out in the reception room um, to kind of do either usually rim lighting or I do cross lighting basically, which is one kind of like 45 degrees to the front, the other one 45 degree to the back. So another thing I have in here is the Manfrotto Nano Stand. Forgot what the exact model is, but this is the one that I use as kind of like an auxiliary light carried around the reception room if I need to. And when I'm doing reception details, I put an umbrella on this. That's what I use. Um, a very nice and small light. I have another one of these umbrella stands on here. I have two umbrellas. Hopefully it's not bad luck. But I have two of these umbrellas. Forgot what the exact size is. I believe they're 30 inch umbrellas. They're just Westcott umbrellas. Two other neat things that I bring are these uh, Manfredo Justin clamps. So they're basically clamps, pretty much utility clamps that have a built-in like hot shoe in it. Um, and you can use these to put flashes anywhere. You can also, if you have a adapter, you can put a camera on it. Basically what I use these for is if I'm in any type of tight reception space and I have a second shooter that wants to put up their own flashes, what we do is we just put it on here and it holds up pretty well. You can use the super clamps that they have, but those are pretty, pretty heavy. Um, so I just use these Justin clamps as a utility clamp to have on the day of the wedding. I think that's pretty much it. That is my wedding photography kit. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions about the gear. And please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already as I post a new Fujifilm or photography video every other week like these two. In the next coming month, I'm actually gonna post a behind the scenes of a wedding day with a GoPro perspective. So if you're excited or interested in that, hit that subscribe button. All right, that's it for me. I'm gonna get out, go shoot, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, I'm gonna clean all this stuff up. Things I do for YouTube subscribers.